So in this module, we're going to be looking at survival data, and specifically, we're going to be using an analysis called the Kaplan-Meier analysis. Um, this can be accessed uh, in multiple ways through the R2 platform. One way is by accessing it through this uh, left menu here under Kaplan-Meier. Otherwise, you can select it under uh, Kaplan-Meier in the analysis selection uh, drop-down menu. So we're going to be accessing it via this left column. And again, we're going to be using the neuroblastoma data set uh, containing eight, 88 samples. We're going to click on Kaplan-Meier, and we're going to start by examining Kaplan-Meier by gene expression. Uh, so you can see here that we have selected the neuroblastoma data set uh, with 88 samples. However, there are many data sets that do have associated survival data of many different tumor types, and you can uh, select any of those. But for this example, we're going to be using the neuroblastoma data set. I'm not going to go into uh, many of the other options at this moment. We'll get into those a little bit later. But we do need to select the gene that we would like to uh, examine for this analysis. And again, we're going to use MICN as the example. We're going to click Next. And we'll use, again, the highest expressing probe, which we discussed in the single gene view uh, module. And we're going to click Next. So what we are now presented with is a Kaplan-Meier uh, plot, um, which is this uh, typical plot here on the left. Uh, so there's a few things that we need to understand in order to read a Kaplan-Meier plot. So what is a Kaplan-Meier uh, analysis? How this works is that you divide uh, patients or divide samples into a certain number of groups. In this case, we've divided them into two groups, comparing a low expressing group to a high expressing group. And we are then going to compare the groups based on the survival of patients in, this, in these groups. In this case, we are looking at overall survival. Uh, and you can also see here in the left menu that there is an option to look at relapse-free survival as well. For this data set, you might also find event-free survival or other options depending on what, what type of data is available for that data set. So how we look at this is that we start at time point zero, uh, where 100% of patients are still alive at that, at that time point. And then we look at how these groups, um, how these group, groups uh, survive over time. So for each step down, it is an event or percentage of events that are happening in, in this subgroup of patients and the remaining percentage of patients that are still alive after a certain amount of time. So each step down in this case represents one patient succumbing to the disease. If you, in certain cases, have a larger step down in one uh, over one time point, as you see here in the low expressing group, you can see a larger step down. That would imply that more than one event is happening or more than one patient is, is succumbing to the disease. Um, what you can also see is that each step down here, which represents one event, is quite large compared to the steps uh, down that you're seeing in the low expressing group. And that is due to the fact that each patient that is succumbing to the disease represents a much larger proportion of 12 patients than the one patient that's succumbing to the disease representing a proportion of the 76. So that is how you can compare what each step uh, represents in, in these types of graphs. And what you can also see is that over time, for instance, between 24 and 48 months, the high expressing McN group uh, has approximately between 5 and 10% of patients uh, surviving, whereas at the same time point in the low expressing group, you have approximately 75% of, of patients surviving. So there is quite a, a, a difference there. You also notice on the curves themselves that you have these little ticks, and these ticks represent uh, censored events. So what that means is that it doesn't imply that a patient has succumbed to the disease, it means that the follow-up information for that given patient has finished at that time point. So as of uh, just after 72 months, there is no longer follow-up information available for the high expressing uh, patient group. Um, you will also see that you do get statistics associated uh, with this curve to tell you how significant it is. And we provide both a raw p-value as well as something called the BOMF p-value, which is the Bomferoni uh, p-value, which is corrected for multiple testing. Now, why is it that we want to correct for multiple testing in this case? Um, and that is due to the fact that in order to, um, in order to represent the data um, in this chart the way we have, we've perform, performed something called the Kaplan scan approach. Now, in order to explain that, we're going to look at this expression graph uh, on the right. And just as, as we discussed in the single gene view, we're going to rank all the patients from the lowest expressing to the highest expressing based on MCN expression in this case. And what we've now done is 
for the Kaplan scan approach, we divide the patients into as many two different group comparisons as possible based on low versus high. So what happens here is you start with, in theory, one patient in the low group and all the rest in the high, and then you move to two patients in the low group and the remaining in the high, and you make every comparison all the way up to the other end where you only have one patient in the high group compared to all the rest in the low. And underneath this, you will then see that we have plotted uh, the negative log of the p-value. So the most significant uh, cutoff is represented here as the highest peak, and that is where we have chosen to make the cutoff for this plot. Now, through that description, you can understand that we had to compare many different uh, analyses, many different group comparisons in order to choose the most significant p-value. And therefore, we must correct uh, this p-value for multiple testing, which is why when you do such approaches as the scan approach, you need to report the Bonferroni corrected p-value and not the raw p-value. So that was how we use the Kaplan scan approach. Now, however, there are multiple ways that we can divide patients into different groups. Um, so the Kaplan scan is, is the one that's set by default. However, if you scroll down to the adjustable settings, uh, you can see that you do have multiple options of different types of cutoffs that you can, uh, that you can select. So you can base, you can split the groups or split the patients into groups based on the median expression, which divides the patients equally into two, two differently sized groups. You can uh, split the groups in based on average expression, um, or you can compare the highest expressing quartile versus all the rest, or the lowest expressing quartile versus all of the rest. So why don't we have a look at how the median expression uh, looks. So we select median, and then we're going to redraw the graph. And here you can see that we have two equally sized groups. So we've compared a lower 44 patients to the higher expressing 44 patients. And here again on the expression graph, you can see exactly where they've split them into the two groups. Um, here you can see that we only supply one p-value, which is the raw p-value again. And this is because we've chosen only one cutoff and we're performing only one test at this time. Uh, so you do not need to correct for multiple testing. So again, as I selected the median expression, you can also select, uh, for instance, the last quartile or first quartile versus the rest of the patients. So we'll select the last quartile. And again, we're going to redraw the graph. And here you can see that by selecting the last quartile, you're selecting the highest expressing group and comparing it to the rest of the patients. And again, you can see that only one p-value is supplied, and that is because we are only performing one uh, statistical test or one group comparison. There is also another method of defining groups uh, that, that we can have a look at. And in order to do so, we're going to go back to the main page. And we're going to access Kaplan-Meier from the left menu again. And this time we're going to select Kaplan-Meier by gene expression, except we're going to take the curtain test in this case. Um, so again, we're going to start with uh, MCN as the gene of example, or as the example gene. And this time we're going to uh, select the curtain test. Um, how the curtain test works is it divides the patients again into two groups. However, it starts in the middle. Uh, at the median expressing patient, or at the median expression cutoff, and then it moves outwards, eliminating one patient at a time from each side until you have the lower expressing group compared to the higher expressing group that creates the largest difference or most significant p-value. Again, because we move out one patient at a time in each direction, we are now going. We are now performing multiple tests, and you th therefore require a uh, Baumferroni corrected uh, p-value for multiple testing. So that's how a curtain, um, that's how a curtain uh, Kaplan approach works in this uh, instance. And you can also select for another example, for instance, the first versus last quartile, which is sim similar to the curtain. However, you're only selecting uh, the first quarter or lowest expressing patients versus the highest quarter of expressing patients. So we can click on that and we can have a view. Now here, again, because we're not performing multiple tests, we're, we're predefining the groups that we're going to compare, we are only supplied again with one individual p-value that is representative of the lowest quarter, 22 patients, versus the highest quarter of 22 patients. So now we've shown you a few different ways that you can use gene expression to divide patients into different uh, groups to compare. Um, and in this case, we've looked at MCN expression and accessed the Kaplan curves via the Kaplan uh, Meyer menus on the main page or the drop-down menu on the main page. But we can also show you that there is an option uh, 
if you are in single gene view or view a single gene, as we have discussed in the previous module, uh, if there is survival data associated with that data set, you can also access that data uh, from the view a gene page here on the left. So if you were to click on that, you will then be brought to um, the MCN overall survival uh, curve, which is defaulted to the Kaplan-Meier scan approach, which we discussed earlier. Um, a few other options that we can discuss is that you can choose to set your own colors, for instance, and, and other uh, adjustable settings that we will discuss in a later module uh, regarding adapting R2. Also, if you have defined groups of patients based on gene expression and split them up into high, low, versus, uh, based on this Kaplan scan approach, as we have done here for MCN, you can also store uh, these groups as tracks uh, for later use, or you can store them for temporary use. So if you return to the Kaplan uh, plot, that this result will be stored uh, temporarily until you make a new plot. Um, Discussing how to store uh, tracks will be discussed in a different module uh, where we will set a link up to here. So we have shown you a few examples of how you can use uh, the different methods to define optimal cutoffs in different ways using gene expression to define groups for your Kaplan-Meier uh, analyses. However, there are ways that you can define your specific cutoff with regards to gene expression. So under adjustable settings, for instance, you can select a specific cutoff of which you can see all the possible cutoffs here and they're associated both raw and Bonferroni p-values. Or for instance, you can select on uh, this ranked expression graph itself, you can select a specific point for the cutoff to happen or select uh, a specific point associated with a specific p-value. So for instance, if I click here, it will then redraw the graph with this new specific cutoff uh, that you were able to specify. So far, we've been looking at using gene expression uh, to divide patients into different groups and look at uh, survival data. However, there are multiple ways of, of dividing patients into groups. Um, so we're gonna return to the main page here. And instead of using gene expression uh, to divide patients into groups, instead we're gonna select using a track or a, or a category uh, in this case. So we're gonna use the same uh, data set, the 88 neuroblastoma tumors. And instead this time, we're gonna separate the groups by track. And to start, we're gonna have a look at using the INSS or the staging of the tumors. Um, here you can then see that the patients are grouped into five different groups, stages one through four, and then stage four S patients. Uh, and because these are static uh, groups and predefined, we are only performing one test and therefore one uh, p-value is provided for uh, this comparison. Um, you can also scroll down to the adjustable settings uh, where you can select using different tracks uh, so you can compare um, different groups of patients that are that are predefined. So for instance, if we want to look at MCN amplified versus non-amplified tumors, we can select that two category group. And again, here uh, you are supplied with one individual p-value comparing the amplified tumors versus the non-amplified tumors. So in this example, we've looked at using tracks as categories to separate groups, in which case the subgroups are predefined by the track itself. It is also possible to look at uh, tracks that are numerical um, and define cutoffs within a track. So for instance, we can select Kaplan-Meier by track in the left menu. Um, and for this example, we're actually going to change the data set we're looking at. So here you can see that there are quite a number of different data sets uh, that do have uh, survival data associated with them, um, and you can look at uh, survival data in any of these data sets. Um, but for this example, we're going to select another uh, neuroblastoma data set that consists of 498 tumors, just to better uh, exemplify what we're what we're trying to show, uh, and click next. And here we are then required to select a track that has numerical value, and in this case, we're going to select the age of diagnosis of the patients. Uh, the type of survival, we can then select overall survival so that it matches with what we've been looking at so far and click next. So what you see here is a graph that looks slightly different than what we've seen before. And this is because this data set consists of many more patients. You can see here it consists of uh, 498 patients. Um, and this is now looking at instead of gene expression values or a uh, 
track as in a category or subgroup of patients, we are now looking at all patients ranked based on their age at diagnosis when they were diagnosed with the disease. And you can see here that using this Kaplan scan approach, the same way that we applied it to gene expression, we've applied it to a numerical track, and we have defined the optimal uh, cutoff being at exactly 582 days, um, which interestingly, knowing uh, biology about neuroblastoma coincides with approximately 18 months of age at diagnosis, which is used as one of the clinical criteria for uh, defining high risk patients. So if you are above uh, 18 months of diagnosis, you are considered a high risk patient, which this approach uh, then exemplifies. So far, we've looked at examples of using uh, both individual genes or individual tracks uh, in order to perform these Kaplan analyses or, or survival analyses. Um, but there are also options to look at multiple genes at once to find which genes are the most significantly associated uh, with overall survival. So we're going to return to the main page. Uh, and under Kaplan-Meier, you can then choose Kaplan-Meier uh, by gene expression. And if you go in there, you can then choose instead of having Kaplan Meier by a single gene, you can select Kaplan scan by a group of genes and click next. So here you're presented with a number of adjustable settings again, and we're going to leave the approach as the scan approach, meaning that it will choose the optimal p value for each gene. And there are a number of gene filters you could set, but if you leave this as it is now without any gene filters on, what this will do is it will scan all genes present in your data set and provide you with a list of genes that are most significantly associated with survival. Uh, under survival data, we're going to look at, for this example, overall survival, and we'll leave uh, the statistics as they are uh, here and click next. So what we were provided with here is a list of all genes that are significantly associated with overall survival. Uh, these genes are then ranked according to their uh, adjusted p-value or significance of association to survival. And under more information, you can also see uh, the number of patients that are defined in the first group or the low expressing group, the average expression of your gene at that cutoff, uh, as well as whether high or low expression of the genes associated with a poor prognosis. Um, and you're also given the raw p-value. So for each of these analyses, you can also click on the individual gene, uh, which will then bring you to the associated Kaplan-Meier curve for uh, this gene and the specific optimal p-value cutoff, as we've discussed before. So if we return to the gene list, uh, you can see on the right-hand side that you do have also options that you can perform uh, further downstream analyses on these genes that are associated with overall survival, such as performing a gene ontology analysis, or you can even store your list as a gene category, which you can then use to uh, perform analyses downstream in the R2 platform.